Hey folks, Ray from DCMerica.com here. It's time to do a bit of a 2018 sports tech year in review. A rewind, if you will, but hopefully without the same horrific YouTube downvoting situation that happened over there. Uh, now we're gonna start off with January. I'm gonna go each month, January all the way to December. I'm gonna try to do one month per one minute, or that's the average anyway. Some months are a bit quieter than that. Um, and I'm mostly gonna focus on the announcement side of things as opposed to the actual delivery side. So sometimes something may have been announced in January, but may not have started shipping until you know March or April, or maybe not even at all in some cases. Of course, 2018 was packed with sports technology goodness. Here on YouTube, I dropped over 116 videos, not including this one, uh, and on the site, 232 posts and probably a few more to come before the end of the year squeaking things under the wire there uh, if you found any of that interesting or even just this video interesting please give it a like down below it definitely helps out the channel as well as whacking that subscribe button if you are not a subscriber so let's go ahead and dive right into january the very first announcement we saw of the year was the wahoo ticker fit optical heart rate sensor and then a week later, we had Scotia announce the Rhythm 24, that being their second generation optical heart rate sensor, very similar to Wahoo's. And then almost the exact same day was Garmin's Forerunner 645 Music Edition, along with the 645 Non Music. That was the company's first foray into music enabled devices of any sort, which is pretty impressive and also kind of sad that it took that long, but at least they're here today. That same day, GoPro exited the drone business. So that whole fiasco of drones falling out of the sky and being late and all that stuff, uh, they, they finally just called it quits on the drone business entirely. Uh, we did see Sunto aim for the urban explorer business with the Sunto 3 non-GPS enabled watch, their smart watch that was under 200 bucks there. Um, so kind of interesting to see them branch out into new business lines. At CES, we also saw Peloton announce their super expensive tread treadmill uh, that started shipping on later on this past year. Uh, but it's something that, you know, certainly is shaping the marketplace. And we're seeing more and more companies getting into that expensive indoor home fitness uh, realm as opposed to just being kind of the gym market. We saw Coros announced their Coros Pace GPS multi-sport watch. Again, kind of getting onto a bit of Garmin's turf, and that was sort of the theme for a lot of things we've seen this year uh, with new entrants into the, the market, jumping into what used to be sort of Garmin's bread and butter. And that's what we saw DJI announce the Mavic Air drone. And it was notable because it not only fit in your back pocket from a cycling standpoint uh, and did all the active track kind of stuff, but also had sensors on both the front and the back uh, from an object avoidance standpoint. Previously, that had been reserved for their larger drones, so it's cool to see that come down to some of their smaller drones. We then shifted into February, which usually be one of the quieter months of the year from a sports technology standpoint. Uh, we saw Zwift officially announce their running uh, portion of the platform, so you can now run within Zwift. And uh, that same event, we saw Stride announce their Stride Live foot pod, uh, though just a few months later, that would be discontinued. Uh, we're not really sure why. The company said they wanted to focus on their high end units, which is too bad. I think there was actually a place in the market uh, for some of those le less expensive running foot pods. Speaking of failures, we saw BSX uh, officially end support for the BSX Insight devices, and with that, continue the downward spiral of a company after they announced a level a couple years prior as part of a now failed Kickstarter campaign. Someday we might actually get those. No, we're never gonna get those devices. That's That ship has sailed and sunk. However, the big success of the month was the Skydio R1 drone. Uh, that was the sports-focused autonomous tracking drone with 13 cameras that was almost impossible to lose. It was pretty impressive stuff and probably one of my favorites for the year in terms of being like really cool sports tech that has a future. Maybe not at that price point, but definitely has a future down the road. March continued the quiet period of the winter. We saw Specialized come out with their power cranks that have been rumored for a long, long time, uh, but it's something that they finally dropped the power meter onto the market. Um, I got the honor of being featured in Outside Magazine, uh, something I was super excited about. Uh, so thank you to Andrew for that. Uh, you will not be forgotten. And then we saw Fitbit announce their Versa smartwatch at $199, uh, bringing mainstream music to fitness devices under $200. And of course, there have always been, you know, sub $200 kind of like knockoff sort of watches with music. But this this was a big company bringing down uh, their products into that price point. April was all about cycling tech, uh, and that's mostly because of the Sea Otter show that was there. Uh, so we saw Garmin launch their RTL 510 radar, basically just the radar, the newest version of that. We saw them launch the Edge 520 Plus, which brought mapping to uh, basically a rebrand of the Edge 520. And then we saw the cheaper Edge 130 come out as well, uh, bringing that price point down below 200 bucks for a pretty capable GPS unit. At that show, we saw Vehicomp announce the Aeropod sensor being the first company on the market to actually sell an Aero sensor. They would then deliver that later on that year. 
And being a bike focused show, Cork brought out TireWiz, which are the air pressure sensors for tires. Most roadies were kind of confused at that, but mountain biking folks, especially fat tire folks, uh, definitely appreciated that. Rounding out April was the announcement of the IQ squared power meter onto Kickstarter uh, and then later on to Indiegogo. Uh, and that's something we still haven't seen delivered yet. They have promised it later on in the summer, early fall timeframe, and now they're looking like 2019. So we'll have to save that one for 2019 to see whether or not that actually happens. May was kicked off with the Garmin InReach mini communicator. Um, that was essentially the lemon sized uh, satellite communicator that did not rely on cellular connectivity to send messages. So if you were like way out in the wilderness, in the middle of the ocean, that would work there to go ahead and get that signal back. Withings plotted the return to glory by buying themselves away from Nokia. Um, so of course, Nokia bought them a couple years ago and that's been mostly a fail boat since that happened. Uh, so hopefully we'll see something kind of sprout from that purchase of themselves back from themselves. It was sort of confusing, but also kind of cool at the same time. Uh, we saw Stack announce the Halcyon uh, Zero Smart Trainer. So in the past, they had their you know, totally silent Halcyon Trainer, and now they have a smart version of that that can control the resistance and things like that. And SRM got back into the game with the exact power meter pedals. Shifting ahead to June, we saw a bunch of really cool stuff. Sigma announced the ROX12 GPS bike computer, again, kind of encroaching on Garmin's turf from a high-end bike computer standpoint. Uh, we saw Sunto announce their Sunto 9, multi-sport GPS becoming sort of the successor to the Spartan line. Garmin announced two different watches of Vivacta 3 Music as well as the Phoenix 5 Plus, uh, both bringing music as well as contactless payments, sort of rounding out that portfolio of watches they started way back at CES in January. And then in a bit of an interesting move, we saw Zwift acquire Milestone. Uh, that's the $25 foot pod that used to be under Milestone, and now Zwift has rebranded it as the Zwift running pod. No changes yet from the internal standpoint, just the logo on the cap, but it will be interesting to see where that goes. Rounding out the month, we had Kinetic announcer InRide 3 sensor, uh, which in included the ability to also put Amplus and Bluetooth Smart in the rest of the Smart Trainer lineup. Um, that's a notable shift from the past when they kind of did their own proprietary thing, so it was cool to see that. Meanwhile, July was all about cycling again with Eurobike uh, and a ton of announcements there in the trainer world. We had Wahoo with a kicker and the kicker core, both totally silent trainers, or at least very, very quiet trainers. Uh, we had Elite announced the Drivo 2 lineup as well as the 40 Pista 14,000 Euro trainer. Uh, so definitely go ahead and pick up two or three of those when you have a chance. We had Tax announced the Flux 2 trainer. Wahoo announced the Headwind. Uh, now, Tax did actually formally announce their Tax Neo Smart Bike, but that was already shown a year prior, so I'm not really counting it this year. But of course, the last piece of trainer hardware was Cyclops' rocker platform. Uh, no name for it yet, no price, no nothing. It just, they just dropped it at the Eurobike and, and called it done. Speaking of indoor training, Ruby went into augmented reality uh, with their software platform that eventually started shipping uh, just a few weeks ago, in fact. Zwift announced their Android beta. And then on the head unit side of things, Garmin announced the Edge Explorer, so $250 bike GPS. Lazine announced a bunch of sub $200 Mega C and Mega XL bike GPSs. Stages announced a pile of GPS units too, including the L50, the M50, the L10, um, all of which haven't quite shifted or shipped yet, but that should hopefully happen later on in January. So a bit of a shift, if you will, uh, from the fall to January. Last but not least, Watt Team announced their Gen 3 Powerbeat, uh, though that wasn't unfortunately the last we heard of that product. August was kicked off with Strava bringing the all-important renaming from Premium to Summit. That's that was really it on the Strava front. Zwift, meanwhile, finally released their Innsbruck course that was much rumored, and then Von Traeger announced their own Garmin Edge 1030 device, um, basically just a black Edge 1030. Samsung, meanwhile, announced their Galaxy Watch, continuing that series of somewhat fitness-focused uh, smartwatches, while Full Gas announced their Apple TV app, a trend that I expect to continue over the next year and into 2019. Fitbit brought out their new Charge 3 uh, activity band, and then a couple days later, Garmin countered that with their Vivo Smart 4 activity band. Finally, wrapping up the month, DJI announced their Mavic 2, and in particular, the new Active Tracking 2.0, which in my testing has been pretty impressive from a sports standpoint, being able to track folks a whole heck of a lot better than the Active Track 1.0 units. September brought the new Polar Vantage series, including the Vantage V and the Vantage M, uh, while a few days later, Apple announced their new Apple Watch Series 4, uh, both cellular and non-cellular editions. 
On the trainer front, we saw Kinetic with the R1 rocking trainer. Uh, that was the kind of the green machine that rocked back and forth, totally direct drive. And Tax announced a minor update with the Flux S, uh, kind of basically just replacing the existing Flux trainer. Menorah did not want to be left out in the new trainer action as well. Interbike announced their Kagura DD direct drive trainer. Uh, and we saw Trainer Road uh, go ahead and cap off kind of their whole year of updates, uh, adding forward looking calendars. But earlier than they did actually add uh, a bunch of the outdoor training pieces allowing you to pull those outdoor rides indoors. On the head unit side, we saw Pioneer announce their own head unit, as well as partner with Wahoo for a bunch of metrics on their head units. Pioneer also refreshed their power meters, and then GoPro rounded out the month with the new GoPro Hero 7 Black, as well as the Hero 7 Silver and White action cameras, though it was a black that got all the tension for the significantly improved stabilization. Garmin kicked off October by adding Spotify support, which may be one of the biggest announcements of the year in the wearables realm, um, not just for Garmin, but for the entire industry, because after that announcement we saw a few more announcements from Spotify on different wearable companies uh, even kind of an attempt at that on the Apple Watch series as well so uh, that was certainly a big deal for Garmin but I think also a big deal for consumers. PowerTap announced a minor power meter update in the form of the P2 pedals and then Garmin announced their Instinct GPS basically taking their high-end Garmin Phoenix GPS's and putting it in a sub $300 package that looked kind of like a Casio watch. Coros meanwhile went the other direction on price and brought out their new Apex Premium GPS watch which I'm actually happy me wearing right here. Uh, so still working on the test for that one. Expect that probably to drop in the new year. And then last but not least, Zwift rounded out October with the New York City course rollout. Diving into November, we got a bit of a surprise from Tax with the Neo 2 Smart Trainer rollout, something that doesn't usually happen that late in the season, but I guess better late than never. And then unfortunately, Watt Team went under as a company, uh, something that sort of came out of nowhere as well, uh, but unfortunately at this point in time, they're no longer supporting units, they're, they're pretty much gone. And then just before the end of the month, we did see Specialized announce their new Angie uh, Smart Connected Helmets that did live tracking and uh, crash detection and all that kind of fun stuff. As for December, that was pretty quiet as usual. Um, by that time of the year, if companies haven't announced their new hardware, it's a little bit late for the holiday buying season. Uh, so it's generally not a time we see new hardware. Uh, in fact, we saw Interbike cancel their show for next year. Uh, we did see Sufferfest announce their plans for next year though. Uh, so give us a bit of a preview just yesterday of what's coming in January. Speaking of which, the new year is just around the corner. We got CES just over a week away, which is where a huge chunk of sports technology announcements tend to happen. Though I do think in 2019, we're gonna see a bit of a quieter start to the year than we have in the past. Uh, so I don't expect a ton of big CES announcements uh, in terms of like major ticket items, but I expect probably a lot of smaller ones. Uh, and even for the first few months of 2019, I expect things to be a little bit quieter, though I think by the time we get to late spring and into the summer, we're really gonna see things in the sports technology space and I think this will be definitely a really interesting year for innovation uh, across the board so I'm definitely looking forward to it. In fact you should check out a video I did with GP Lama Shane Miller uh, and Desfit back about a week and a half or two weeks ago maybe it was three weeks ago it's all kind of blurring now in December on our 2019 sports technology predictions and sort of our wish list I'll link that right up there. With that thanks for watching I look forward to catching you in the new year with all sorts of new sports technology goodness on the way.